because you're either thinking my replacement may get an opportunity. <laughs> Your head better be on a swivel. Totally. Or maybe I just need to get out of the game for a while because I just can't slow these guys down. They've got to figure out a way to disrupt these offenses. And typically, one guy makes a big play, and that can help change things. They'll be looking for disruption on both sides right now. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. Give the Colts 13 yards and a first down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Give him a couple on the scramble. It's second down. Brandon, once that one broke down, there were only so many options left for him to take. Fortunately, only first down, so he smartly got the yardage he could get and didn't worry about trying to turn it into a bigger play and end up taking a bigger loss. Here, they hope they can regroup and get something different. And the Jags get to him as down he goes. Devon Hamilton. The defensive tackle getting in there for a loss of five. I think you saw the same thing that I did there, partner. Remember, he's their backup quarterback, so the last thing they need is to lose another one right here on the sack. Looks like he's going to be okay, though. Yeah, he looked like he was favoring something in the left leg. Appears to be fine now, but you're right. That O line, they got to protect it. And now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. And this was a little bit of the knock on him coming out of college. Sometimes the concentration could wander a bit. This should have been a big play, but somehow he's not able to corral it. And this will be taken at the 13. It'll be a 44-yard punt, six on the return. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. The Jacksonville offense set to begin their next drive. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. It's a loss of four. Now third down. I'll tell you what, this defense hasn't played its best, but they're still right in this football game. If they keep making plays just like that, they're going to give their offense a chance. Throw left side complete to Ingram. And they will stop him short. They get him to the ground at the 27. No first down. And they'll try and throw for it with Lawrence. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Jags first down. And they pick it up rather easily. A gain of nine on fourth and two. We always hear about guys wanting to make plays that quiet a crowd. Shh. Yeah. After that one. Here in the oh, third go. quarter, they were hoping to get the stop, get the football back. Not the case. What a completion on a fourth down play. Off the play fake. Here's Lawrence. He'll get this out to the flat for ETN. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. They go play action with Lawrence. Steps away to his left. So that one a hold right guard. And you understand why offensive and defensive linemen probably go to martial arts schools and work on their hands so often because that can be the make or break difference on a play. This time he had to grab a jersey in order to make the play happen. Got caught for the penalty. We are through three quarters here on NFL Kickoff Weekend. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Throw 
going again here. It's Lawrence. They'll try and set up the screen to ETN. Across midfield. He's on his way. And he'll be forced out of bounds all the way down inside the 20. A big play there on the catch and run. 57 yards. On play action, Lawrence. Got his man. It's the tight end, Strangewood. And all the way down inside the five to the four. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. Lawrence now off the bootleg, sliding out of the pocket. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. Well, it certainly appears to me that the defensive guys are starting to look a little bit tired while he still has some fresh legs. Not the biggest gain we've seen on a scramble, but still, some positive yardage on a play that initially looked like a sure win for the defense. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Now Lawrence now going to move him around. Once more, ETN, but he will lose yardage here as they knock him back to the three. That'll back him up two yards and also bring up fourth. It's interesting where we are in the game now. The analytics folks, they might tell you to kick the field goal and make it a two-score game. But you have to wonder if emotionally they're thinking, let's go for the touchdown and try and slam the door. A field goal would make it a two-score game, but they're going to go aggressive. They're going to try this thing on fourth and goal. Lawrence will throw. That's to his running back, complete. A great open field tackle is going to stop him shy of the goal line. They get the completion but cannot push forward into the end zone. And this Colts defense comes up with a goal line stand. The Indy offense at the line and set to go. Well, they're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. Richardson now on second down. And he will slide down with the first down for the moment, but a penalty flag on the field. So they elect to decline it. And why not? Just go ahead and let the play stand, and they'll take that. Just week one, but already plenty of intrigue with the games going on, and this one no different as we come up on a first and ten. 19 tight. 19 tight. Ready. Richardson. That is caught Michael Pittman with it. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. 23 yards, the final tally. Working the sideline there. Good route, good catch. First down, and he gets out of bounds. Yeah, you have to like the play calling because you have to run some guys down the middle of the field to draw some of the defenders away. They can't just let them guard the sideline exclusively. That's how it's going to work. Sidelines and incompletions to use the clock. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. This could be the start of a nice stand from this defense now after getting walked backwards on this drive. Come through with another one here, and you have them staring at a third and long, and that puts the defense in a position to dictate to the offense. Now a second and ten. Now it's Richardson. A short throw pulled in by Woods. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. A nice throw right there, and these fans getting their first look at their QB1 of the future. I'd imagine it's got to be a big plus for him to get his first start here in front of that home crowd. I know there's a school of thought about getting your first start away from home so you don't have the extra pressure of that crowd behind you. But I say ride the wave. Embrace it. Go ahead and play to that level, and I think it's going to benefit him in the long run. Plenty of time. All three timeouts still remain. Here's first and ten now. From the shotgun, Richardson. 
The left side taken in by Pittman. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. Oh, yes, down by a touchdown. They needed a big play here quickly, and they got one. And now, plenty of time. No need to panic, but you do need to move quickly. They'll come up first and 10 here. Running straight ahead, Taylor. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. The Jaguars going to go ahead and use their first timeout. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Richardson. And it's caught. Touchdown, Colts. Jonathan Taylor. Touchdown. And the Colts drive the entire length of the field, 99 yards for the score. Well, the hard part's done. Now they just need to split the post, tie it up, but then their defense is going to have to hold up to send it to overtime. Yeah, no matter what. I know there's an inclination in it when you have momentum to go for two here, but if you miss it, you don't give your defense a chance at all. Plus, it's been a good game. I want to see overtime. I'm selfish. You obviously don't have a fault to catch. Tomorrow. What a start to the season. This has been back and forth. All tied fourth quarter as the kick is away here. No run back here for Duvernay. Touch back out to the 25. This is first and 10. Lawrence. Screenplay. Here's ETN. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Here comes second down. Here's Lawrence. Nice solid game there, Barbara, but the clock is starting to become his enemy. Absolutely. Every second right now, more and more precious as it ticks. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeout as the clock will stop with 45 seconds left to go in the game. Well, this one's had a season's worth of thrills already, and it's still week one. Here's third down now. Back to throw. Lawrence. Oh, look at this. It's intercepted. Picked up by Zaire Franklin. And this return is going to be halted right around the 28-yard line. Well, we say it often, Charles, but not all interceptions are created equally, and that is a big one here in a tie ball game in the fourth quarter. And Brandon, when games are this close, it usually comes down to the team making the fewest mistakes, and that was one of our mantras back at Tennessee. Coach Major say all the time, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. You've got to cut those down to give yourself an opportunity. A little bit of space there for the first down run as that's going to get them about five yards. Oh, that was a thing of beauty right there. Look at how quick those blockers fired off the line once the ball was snapped. That was an O-line on a mission, all in sync, and the defense is lucky that play only picked up five yards. Ready, go! And now they're going to get the timeout. So a huge play has him in field goal range with a chance to possibly send this one to OT. So it all rests now on the right foot of the kicker, Matt Gay. His first attempt of the afternoon, and it's for the win. And his kick is right there. It's good, but now there is a penalty marker on the field, so let's see what this is about. After the main field goal, Gay back out there to kick it off. And a mistake on the ladder. It's a loose ball. Now, this was not just the opener of a brand new season, but this was a division game here in week one. And to come through with a 1-0 start against a division opponent gives you a little something extra heading forward for the rest of the season. Yeah, let's pile it all into one game, right? 